Well, hello, everybody. This is Joan Maroney, your Mother of Mercy messenger with a fast Friday message of the day. And I am so excited to um, welcome a friend of ours that we met many years ago as we were traveling across the country. We came to her parish that is in Riverton, Wyoming, Miss Julie Feebigger. Hello. Um, Hi, Julie. (laughs) Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be on your program. Well, everybody, I have Julie here today because uh, we were chatting a little bit about how her preparations went for uh, during Lent in preparation for the celebration, the Feast of Mercy. And she shared with me um, something I'd never really heard about before. And this is the Eastern Rite Fast, the Great Fast for Lent. And um, I think all of you that have been part of uh, Fast Friday, we're all learning to um, start small and get better, better, be better fasters. And so Julie has a a very interesting uh, information to share with us today about the Eastern Rite Fast. So Julie, uh, tell us a little bit about how you became acquainted with this type of fasting and, and the Eastern Rite practice. Sure. About three years ago, in Lander, Wyoming, uh, they, they, well, first of all, they have a, a, the um, Wyoming Catholic College at in Lander, Wyoming, and they brought in um, a Ukrainian or a Byzantine Rite um, priest to serve the students um, on, on campus along with the Roman Rite. And so he's, this priest came from Calif- originally from New York, was in California and some other places too. But the parish that he was at in California, it folded. So he accepted the, the um, invitation to be a part of Wyoming Catholic College. Well, during COVID, when um, churches were not being um, offering the mass, they, they were closed. Father Anderson, the Ukrainian visiting right priest, his bishop said, "You can you can continue having um, divine liturgy is what the Eastern Rite calls it. Um, we call it the, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass." But it's the same thing, and that he could continue to have mass or divine liturgy. And so I was asking some friends, not knowing that this was happening, asked some friends, so where are you, are you guys going to church or, you know, what's, what's going on? And they, that's when they shared with me about the, the, the Byzantine Rite offering the, their divine liturgy. And so, um, First time I went was um, three years ago uh, around Christmas time, <clears throat> and um, that was the first I had experienced the um, an Eastern Catholic um, rite, um, the, which um, I mentioned that it's, it, it's a Byzantine rite, which is in um, fully in communion with the Pope, with um, the, the magisterium, the teachings of the um, church. And um, so I started to attend more frequently the um, this rite. So it, just to recap, it's it is in line with Rome. Um, it's just the Eastern rite. And so, what is their fasting like during Lent here in the Roman rite? Um, we require two days of fasting: Good Friday and Ash Wednesday, and abstaining from meat on Fridays. Right, but the Byzantine is a little bit. Um, <laughs> A little stricter and more intense. So share with us what that's like, Julie. Sure. First of all, in their right, it is not necessarily an obligation. Um, it's it's a practice that they see as um, being something that can be beneficial as a, a self discipline, detachment from the world, um, detachment from from your um, attachments that you might have that is keeping you from having a close relationship from our, from our Lord 
think it can also be like used for, or what they they practice is to that it's an it's a, a weapon against um, maybe something that you were um, trying to become free from there's an enslavement of, of sin. So for them, again, it's not an obligation like it is for the Roman rite that we are obligated during Lent to um, you know, fasting on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. So so they would have that same requirement, though, because they're part of the Catholic Church. So, right. They have to. They have to fast on Good Friday and Ash Wednesday. And, yes, and yes, and, yes, they and abstain and from meat. Right, right, okay. and yet they they don't call it Ash Wednesday, but they, yes, they they do. Um, they yes, they do fast. Okay. Um, on this, okay. Yes. So what you're talking and, about is is a practice that they recommend. Um, to just kind of to amp it up a little bit, like you did. <laughs> So what what is that? Yeah. Yeah. So they actually start their Lent on the Monday of when we start, the Roman Rite starts Ash Wednesday. So they actually start on Monday of Ash Wednesday week. And so their fasting is it, um, on Monday through Friday, they fast with on only one meal, and generally it's after three o'clock, anytime after three o'clock. So that fasting is you refrain from meat, eggs, dairy products, fish, um, cooking or um, salad oil, and alcohol. And then on Mondays, or excuse me, on Saturdays and Sundays, they can have three meals, no snacking in between, but you still refrain from meat and dairy. But they can have their have oils and and wine on those days. There are some days like. Um, the the, um, the Annunciation fell on um, a Friday, I believe it was, and so they they do allow fish on on those feast days. And there was another day, I think it was in their church calendar. I think it had to do with something with um, Saint John the Baptist, and that you still fasted, but you could have fish where. Otherwise, they they don't include fish as a or they 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 consider fish because it has bone and um, blood vessels that they refrain that or they consider that as um, a meat in the meat category. All right, so I'm just going to kind of review here so everybody can you know this can sink in. So all of Lent, uh, one meal a day, Monday through Friday. And try to make it after three o'clock, and that you cannot have meat or uh, like red meat or chicken or turkey or or any kind of fish. But you did say earlier that you can have um, shellfish, right? Shrimp or True. crab or I would guess is it oysters, yes. clams, yes, that's those kinds of things. Okay, that and um, no dairy, so that means no cheese or milk or yogurts. Um, no eggs, because that comes from the chicken. So no eggs, yes. uh, no alcohol, uh, no olive oil. Now, did you say earlier that you could have, because um, you need oil sometimes for cooking, right? Um, so. Yeah. Well, I, I, kind of, I wanted to make sure that I was giving the right information. And they said um, um, no cooking or salad oil, but it's, but I know that there's some oils out there, like vegan. There's vegan oils or vegan butter, um, oatmeal butter, those sort of things that you can use that's mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. um, I found a product that it was a sweet oil, but it wasn't it wasn't um, um, an oil because I I asked a friend that um, is a 
a practicing visiting. If, if that oil was, I could use that oil. And she said, yes, because of whatever kind of, I, I don't know, I can't remember um, what the oil was, but it was something that, that you could, that they accepted as being an oil that could be used in your cooking or in your salad. Why, why, why no oil? Do you know? Um, I do not. Yeah. What about, yeah. what about, what about breads? I mean, what about things that have, you know, uh, if bread, if you're making bread and it, and it's got eggs in it or, or milk, I mean, can you eat, can you eat bread? You can eat bread. And there's an artisan bread that calls for flour, water, and yeast and salt. And it is the best tasting bread. <laughs> and easy. I ate a lot. <laughs> you eat a lot of that. Yeah. So after when, when you were telling me yesterday about um, you know, no meat, no, no, no chicken, no eggs, no dairy, because the first day was like, well, eggs. He loves eggs, you know. <laughs> he eats three eggs yeah. every day. You know, okay, we well, you know lots of eggs. And it's like, no, no eggs. So I th then what do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so what were yeah. some of the things? Give give us some ideas of uh, what your diet would consist of. Sure. So besides your salads and your vegetables, um, I had spaghetti. Um, um, with um, and you do have to look at the the um the ingredients in, with some of the sauces, the marinated sauces. Um, because they might have oil on olive oil in it, but there's many that don't. Same with the noodles, the spaghetti noodles or rotini noodle. You, they might have egg in it, but there's noodles that don't. And so, um, I would have spaghetti and um, with maybe broccoli, um, a mushroom instead of the meat. And I would have soup with um, like pea soup, bean soup. I just didn't use the um, meat broth or um, um, ham, put ham in it or the, the um, boiled ham, the um, ham bone. Um, I use vegetable broth instead with different spices. Um, let's see, like, like I mentioned, the bread. You can have peanuts. You can have any kind of nut. Um, so like walnuts, almonds, cashews, um, fruit. So you could eat peanut butter and jelly. Yes. <laughs> yep. I, and I know that I know that there is some oil in peanut butter, but um, you know that they're, they're strict. But you know, if, if you can't find something, or if you feel if you can't find, let's say noodle that, that that has egg in it is it okay sure yep because it's not a sin right you, you, it's something that you're you are just making these sacrifices um for various reasons that um that why we fast and so um so it's it's not like that we can't in, enjoy food but we're but we're restricting ourselves to um, to draw closer to our Lord, or doing acts of penance, or acts of reparation. Mm -hmm. um, we're sacrificing for souls, um, for conversion, and or healing, salvation for souls. Um, at least in the the Roman Rite, that's mm -hmm. why we fast, mm -hmm. or one of the reasons why we fast. And how did you deal with, uh, I mean, do, do, are you really hungry or no? Or you, does your body adjust? I mean, how do you feel about all yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. So definitely there's that hunger. Just like any of us experience just on that one day, um, fasting on Friday. But there's, there's that discipline again that <clears throat> you... You refrain from it because there's a purpose why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I reflected a lot 
when when I was hungry, I asked definitely for God's help that helped me refrain from caving in and having a snack or um, eating an extra meal when um, when I made that commitment to fast during Lent. Um, so you pray for in- intercession and and also just knowing that it's okay to be hungry. That we don't always have to cave into our bodily impulses to have something in our hand or have something in our mouth or when I get that hunger hunger pain that I that I gotta have I gotta have some food. You know, you know, I go get yourself a drink of water, which I did many times, and um, get yourself busy, active again, maybe in prayer, maybe reading something, maybe getting outside and going for a walk or a bike ride or cleaning yard or whatever. Get your mind off off of, off of food. Get yourself maybe thinking about um, our Lord and His passion, you know, what He did for us, and um, whatever, you know, but. Yeah, so you definitely have those same hunger hunger pains, and um, but then there's that part that that because of that hunger, which I experienced many many a time, that I it, I look forward to having a meal and appreciating the meal, and I'll and I'll tell you what there there were many a time that even that spaghetti, um, that it just tasted so good because you waited all day long to have that meal at the end of the day. And there was just something about how good it tasted. <laughs> right. And so there was, that, there was that appreciation of, um, of having food um, and how good God is and and how good food is and um and then then an, another part to that sometimes well in the eastern rite if they have mass at the end of the day they are they practice no eating until after Mass or divine liturgy. Now you can have water, but some of some of the Eastern rites that follow the Eastern rites, they they'll even exclude water. But but it's okay to have water. But they they fast the entire day until after they receive Holy Communion, because it's like be waiting and being hungry for our Lord. And I experienced that many a time, just just that waiting. When and when would they have mass? Like at what time? Well, in the Eastern Rite, they during Lent, Monday through Friday, they they do not have mass. They have what's called pre-sanctified gifts on Wednesdays and Fridays. And that would be equivalent to our Good Friday. So there's there's Holy Communion, or there's Holy Communion, but the the consecrated host is reserved and um, that sun or um, on Holy Thursday night, where they have have extra consecrated hosts reserved in the tabernacle, so that there would be enough for Good Friday. For the communicants, well, in, in the Eastern Rite, they'll have extra cakes. They don't have the host. They use bread that looks like unleavened bread that looks like cake. And um, he'll, he'll consecrate extra um, bread um, on Sunday to have for Monday, or excuse me, Wednesday and Friday. And they were the pre sanctified what they call pre sanctified gifts. That was at the end of the day, generally at five o'clock. And so then 
so otherwise divine liturgy is in the morning and you you um do not have anything other than if you need your medication or or water be um until after um their liturgy whereas we can have something up to an hour before receiving communion um and so they're they're much much stricter on that to to be empty to be empty for our lord be hunger hunger and thirst for him is their um um commitment or the way they they um fast well you know the interesting thing we started as we were doing fast fridays throughout lent early on we we talked a little bit about uh, the way some of the great saints, uh, the very strict fasts they did, the very austere fasts. You know, uh, St. Faustina, for example, we use this example. She wanted to fast for 40 days just on a uh, small piece of bread and a drink of water. And, uh-huh. you know, and she wanted to do that for 40 days. And to us, that just sounds bizarre. She she was only allowed to do it for seven days, which she did do it for seven days. But I think, oh, my goodness, we can't even for one day think yeah. of just have a drink of water and a piece of bread. You know, just one day. She did it for seven days, and she wanted to do it for 30. But, you know, I think that Eastern Rite is looking at what we're presenting and showing is the history of the church of how how intense people were with with prayer life and fasting and the austerity of it. And I think that, yep. you know, so to kind of show us, like, come on, the church gives us a minimum of what we need to do, you know, to where it's, we're not in sin, right? Because it's a merciful church and an understanding church. But that doesn't mean that you can't do more or you shouldn't do more. Just like you said in the Eastern Rite, um, this is what they recommend. This is what they strive for. But we haven't painted that picture for people very well. You know what I mean? Like to, 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 to expose them to a higher standard. And and that's what I love what the Holy Spirit has led us through this Lent. And then also just following up with you right now on what you've done and, you know, with your exposure, how COVID worked <laughs> um, in a very positive way to show us, you know, we can do more and we ought to do more. And, yep. and it's good for us. Yep, 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 totally, totally. We we um, have fallen into just being so re- or so lax in mm-hmm. so many things that our church are, is practicing now that uh, that I I think that was a mistake yeah. that um, and that there there were reasons. In, in our early church, why they fasted the way they did or refrained um, from, um, um, I don't know, different practices that is allowed now. Mm-hmm. And I think we need to take a look at going back and and, and seeing well, what why was why was that? And and in the Eastern Rite, I know that it's a practice that they followed from way back when hermits and monks they um or and even our lord you know fasting for 40 days well these monks and hermits they fasted too and found success with it and became holy men and men and and so why why can't we be doing the same thing other than we don't like to feel uncomfortable or practice those things that give us comfort. Well, we, 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 we justify too, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I know our lady in Medjugorje, when we, she talks about fasting and uh, some people would say, well, I, I can't fast. And she said, no, it's not that you can't. It's you lack the faith that, that God will give you the strength to do it and see the benefits of it. And we, right. you know, and we hear a lot of people say, no, I can't because um, I'm, I'm diabetic or, well, well, we, we like to say, all right, well, it's your, then change your meal choices. Yeah. Eat bland food, yeah. eat more simply, eat smaller. Um, there's a yeah, lot. Or, or 
afraid of interrupting, but something that I mentioned to you yesterday that when we were talking about this, that, um, when I mentioned to some friends that I, this was a fast that I was going to use, they shared with me that instead of fasting to one meal, um, but they still wanted to fast and uh, um, refrain from all dairy. Or another person that I know, she refrained from all meat um, during Lent, including Sundays. And so, yeah, so yeah, you can make up the excuse that these are the reasons why I can't fast, but just like you're saying, there's other ways that you can fast that maybe isn't as strict as the Eastern Rite, but that you're making some sort of sacrifice, some sort of self-denial. Um, right. So, oh, the devil's done a good yeah. job with us. You know, we want everything. We're, we want it now. I mean, we don't want to be uncomfortable, like you said, but then you know what? When then we sit around and we, we complain and we lament about, you know, how terrible the world is and how, how much sin has entered in and the state of the church and the state of our kids and our family and, you know, the, the agendas that are being pushed. But I've got to look back at ourselves and say, how much effort are we really putting into changing and sacrificing for these changes and making reparation? And, and offering yeah. it up for the conversion of these people that are, you know, immersed in sin and have bought the lie. Well, and I was going to say, Joan, too, that something that we talked, I think it was earlier this morning, about the church used to have Ember Day four mm -hmm. times a year where you fasted on um, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday as an act of reparation for sin. And then there was those rogation days. And I I can't remember how many rogation days there are. Maybe, I don't know, I better not say, but there is one coming up, April, April 25th. And they had those rogation days of fasting for reparation for sin. And the Eastern Rite, they, they have four... Four times a year, four periods of the year where where they fast. So one of them is Lent. Then they have fasting. Um, they call it Nativity fast. So just before Christmas, and it's approximately four weeks. They have a fasting um, um, starting at the end of May through June 28th, and it's called the Apostles Fast. The feast day in the Eastern Rite, and I think it's in the Roman Rite too, is um, the feast day of St. Paul. Is that Peter and, and Paul? Um, is it Peter and Paul? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So they're fasting approximately four weeks. This light land, this fast, complete fasting, one day, um, yeah, one, one meal a day. And then they have the Dormition fast, and that's August 1st through the 14th. So that's a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, so there you go. They, they might have different reasons why they fast, but they, they're fasting. So there's no, there's no reason why um, we couldn't be fasting in the Roman rite as far, as far as I'm concerned. And I was going to look up, I didn't have a chance to before this call, but uh, what the Muslims do for Ramadan. That's a, oh. that's a, they do a pretty strict fast themselves for quite a long period of time. I'll have to look, we'll cover that on another lesson, <laughs> the show, yeah. you know, we can do it. We can do more, we can be better. And, yeah. um, it's very encouraging to hear, um, that, uh, there are the people in the church and others and other practices that, that help us shoot for a higher standard. So, Julie, yeah. you know, um, do you know why April 25th is the rogation day? Um, I don't. It, okay. It's been a while since I read why April 25th. Yeah, I just don't remember. Yeah. So that's, that's just, why it was. That's just in a few days. Um, it's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. 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 All right. Mm -hmm. So today is Fast Friday, and we mm -hmm. hope that. Uh, all of you have 
learned and uh, from what Julie has shared with us about the, this Eastern Rite Byzantine practice of of their great fasts and and that it'll help you strive uh, to to do a little bit more to to be a have a little a greater discipline and and just keep striving like Julie said you know do do what you can but keep trying to get better and better and you're gonna you're gonna grow you're gonna learn you're gonna see. And um, pray, pray when when you have those temptations. And you know what? And if you fall down, and you you slipped up, and you grabbed a snack or ate an apple or something like that, don't beat yep. yourself up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, you know, the yep. Lord loves every attempt that you do. And and the clear thing that He told mm-hmm. Saint Faustina too was when what gives it power is when you do it out of love for me, and uh-huh. that unite it with our Lord and. And with the hunger that so many people really do feel, the children that that haven't eaten anything for a couple of days, you know, or that are digging through trash to find something that that they can put inside their bodies, and there are a lot of people in the world like that. So, all yeah. right, Julie, hey, Joan, can I just share a couple of other things? Sure. Um, a couple of my great saints, what they said. Yeah. Saint John Chrysostom, he said. And this is in quotes. It means abstinence not only from food, but but from sin. The fast should be kept not by the mouth alone, but also by the ear, the eyes, the feet, the hands, and all the members of the body. And what he was referring to is um, fasting from impure sight. Movies, books, pornography, the way we might look at the opposite sex, malicious gossip, um, acts of injustice. St. Basil said, in quote, it is useless to fast from food and yet to indulge in cruel criticism and slander. You do not eat meat, but yet you devour your brother. So mm-hmm. as we fast through food, let us also abstain from every passion. And um, the, one of the last things that um, this father, Shemesh, I'm not going to say this right, Alexander Shemesh, Sh- Shemen, he said the primary aim of fa- fasting is to make us conscious of our dependence upon God. So just some things to remember as we're fasting. It's it's not just from food, but let's fast from our passions and become dependent um, on our Lord who is always there willing, wanting to help us along with our Blessed Mother and our saints. As as St. Faustina, she um, um, hit had a good, excellent practice of calling on, on the saints when she was in need and um, asking for their their help. So, Absolutely. And, well, beautiful, beautiful. Well, there you have it, everybody. And uh, Julie, thank you for sharing. And we'll have to have you back as we go through the year. We'll remind everybody these other times of year, uh, Ember Day's coming up again and... Uh, um, the rogation days, and we're 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 doing our fasting on Fridays, abstaining from meat, trying to abstain from meat on Fridays every Friday. It's not Lent anymore, but remember that's still the call of the church. Um, it's not a sin if you eat meat, but if you don't refrain from from eating meat, you're supposed to give up, do some other form of penance or good work. So with that. It's still the Easter season. Um, It will be until Pentecost at the end of May. So continue to rejoice and be glad and um, look forward to the coming of the Holy Spirit, which is going to be very exciting too. So with that, we're going to say God bless. This is Joan Maroney, your Mother of Mercy messenger with my friend Julie Feebigger. God bless you, Julie. Thanks for joining us. And God bless all of you. Have a great Fast Friday.